Now, when we create a kit, we need to go over specific products that we're going to include in the kit. So when it comes to our products, let's say that we go to our product list. Okay, so we go to product management and then we click on products. So let's say for this kit that we're going to create, we want to include at least three to four products. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select cosmetic eyeshadow as an example, the nail polish, lipstick, pink blush, and the jewelry. So for each product, we need to go to the product settings. All right, and then under set it, when it comes to adding these products to the kit, we need to go to product is available for kit. So this flag will need to be enabled. Okay, so think about create as the kit as the parent product. Product is available for kit as the child product. And so if anyone starts asking what's the difference between the two, you just let them know that you need to select specific products to be included in the kit. So that's why we need to go and edit our products and make sure under kit settings we enable product is available for kit. That's all you need to do at least to enable these products. So I'm going to enable four products. Okay, so we'll edit nail polish and lipstick. Once again, we come on the kit settings, go to product is available for kit, click save and close. Okay, so we go to the next product. So at least this section will be easy. It's just having a better understanding how this is going to work. And then we go to our last product. All right, so once you have done enabling product is available for kit under kit settings, then you need to create a new product. Now, you could use an existing product and create that product as a kit, but you want to start out with a fresh product and label a price for that product. And so we click on add product. Okay, so you just go to the standard procedures. You have to give your product a product code and a product name. Okay, so if it, of course, if it's going to be a physical product, select physical product under product type. And I'm going to go under product unit and select each. And of course, you're going to put in your short description and full description. So you have to click on the full description link so you have your full WYSIWYG editor. All right. So let's say this product is going to be available in the shopping cart, so we have to make it visible in the shopping cart. And let's say I want this kit to be a part of the enrollment option. So if someone wants to go and join as a distributor, this product will be available. But of course, we need to go under plans and enrollment options to add that kit. All right, so the moment of truth. Under kit settings, we enable create as a kit. So now we have other flags here. Deduct includes SKUs from inventory and deduct primary product SKU from inventory. So the difference between the two is that deduct includes SKUs from inventory. So if you add your SKUs as part of the inventory and warehouse, it will be deducted out of that warehouse where you will actually see the quantity deducting. Now deduct primary product SKU, which is pretty much going to focus on the primary product SKU in that kit. So I believe the first one that we added was the cosmetic eyeshadow, 
So it's going to focus on deducted the quantity from that product SKU. And of course, if it's included in the inventory, which must be tied to a warehouse. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Apply. So that should save my changes. Okay, so now we have all of these other tabs here. Of course, we need to tie this kit to a specific category. So I'll, I'll go ahead and include it under All. And then we go to Images. Of course, we must upload our product image if this is going to be included in the shopping cart. So I'm just going to browse through my pictures. I'm going to select the thumbnail size, 200 by 270. How can I tell if, the, if this image has the correct dimensions? I simply just place my cursor on top of the image and it shows me dimensions, 200 by 270. Now when we go to the detail, which is the magnified image, or the larger image, it will be 100 by 1350. Then you click here, clip to upload. All right, so we, get, we are going to skip additional information because it applies to custom attributes, which is currently the module is turned off. Files. If you want to upload a PDF document, Microsoft Word document, Excel spreadsheet, you can go ahead and upload it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select a PDF, click to upload. So this will appear right below the image in the shopping cart, which I'm going to demonstrate before we conclude this webinar. Of course, if you want to include related products, related categories, so you select the related ca ca category, and also if you want to, select the related products. Product tabs. So if you want to include additional information, Maybe you want to get some specifications for this kit. Um, if you want to add videos or social media links, then you can go ahead and enable these tabs. So when you enable the tabs, of course, you will have your WYSIWYG editor and you just need to switch over the tabs and include that content. When it comes to videos, what you need to do is grab YouTube or Vimeo embed code then you come here, click on HTML, paste the code, and then the video frame will appear here. So let me demonstrate that real quick so everyone has a better idea of what I'm referring to. So if you have a YouTube channel, you want to use that video for the product, and maybe instead of writing all the wordings or the text, maybe you just simply want to present a video. Okay, so if the video is playing, it's fine. I'm just going to pause the video. What we need to do is click on Share, then click on Embed. So we need to copy this code here for the video. What I'm going to do is click on Show More, and I'm going to uncheck this box here. Because when the video is done, I don't want YouTube to show suggested videos. I just want it to stop, and then it's just going to go back to the beginning. Okay, so I'm going to copy that code, and let me just turn off additional information and specifications. I'm just going to focus on videos. So I'm going to click on HTML. I'm going to paste the code here, and now we see our YouTube video frame. So now I'm going to click Save and Close. Technically, when creating this product, you can go and click on the SKUs tab and create the SKU. But I want to make sure that all my changes are saved. Okay, so let's go and edit our product again. Now we can go ahead and create the SKU. All right, so when it comes to your kit, you're going to give your kit a specific price. You're going to label the sales price, suggested retail price, and also the wholesale price. So what's the difference between sales price and wholesale price? Well, the sales price is what customers are going to pay for the product when they go through the shopping cart. 
So let me go ahead and put in SKU ID and then the SKU name. Okay, so we have selected specific products to be included in the SKU or at least to be included in the kit. So if someone goes to the shopping cart, we want them or we want our customers to pay $199. When you go over to the suggested realtor price, here in red it shows us suggested retail price must be greater than or equal to sales price. What that means, we can go ahead and put $199 or it could be greater than the sales price. Now, the reason why you can put it as greater than, because in the shopping cart it's going to show you save this amount of money, so it's actually going to slash out the price for this retail price. And of course, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate this. So let's say that this product is $250. Now the wholesale price, when someone goes to join now and they want to become a distributor, they will pay a specific price. I'm going to go ahead and put $150. It's more of a discounted price for distributors. Under other settings, I'm going to focus on display and shop. Display is part of enrollment options. Under SKU filter options, this is just another way of saying I'm going to apply permissions for the SKU. That way, depending on which SKU filter options I select, that role will see the SKU and the pricing. So everyone, of course, applies to a visitor, anyone visiting the website, customers, distributors. Um, it could be anyone that doesn't have an account. So that applies to anonymous user. Distributor only simply means only distributors that have a back office can access the pricing of the SKU. Customer only. Same rules apply, but now only customers can go through the shopping cart and see the pricing of the product. And then, of course, here in the other row, we have customer and distributor, public and customer, and public and distributor. So under cart settings, the add to cart simply means that the physical button add to cart will be available. If you want your users to have a wish list of products, you enable this flag here. Now, the auto ship, even though I'm not going to cover this probably in another webinar, the auto ship, if you enable it here, it simply means that the auto ship button will be displaying, meaning that your users can go and configure the auto ship. When that happens, of course, you have to create a second SKU. So that's going to be explained in our next webinar session. So if you want to, you can go ahead and put it in the SKU description. I'm going to go ahead and skip that and click on Apply. Okay, so when it comes to creating your product kit, you need to focus more on adding up the total amount of your sales price, suggested retail price, and wholesale price. So we're going to skip inventory because we're not going to tie this product to a warehouse. We're going to skip packaging for now. This is going to be explained in a different webinar session when it comes to shipping. Shipping plays a major role when it comes to your packaging, set up, your SKUs, especially when it comes to the dimensions and the weight. We're going to skip additional information because it doesn't apply to this product. Receipt page display. How this works is you can enable this here and you can add extra content. Let's say that you want to add, thank you for purchasing this product. Please go here to view more information. You could create a hyperlink. So that will actually appear in the receipt page, excuse me, of this specific SKU. All right. Now, when you go to included SKUs, this is the area where you need to focus on the most. Here in blue, it shows us, note, package total must be sales price, $199, suggested retail price, $250, wholesale price, $150. So, of course, we need to enable the selected SKUs. Then we put in the quantity. So what's going to be included in the SKU and how many? I'm just going to put one each. So. 
we need to pretty much start focusing on the numbers here because at the end we need to focus on the total amount. We're not going to focus on, okay, well, I know this product costs, let's say, $30. We're not going to focus on that because it's not changing the actual pricing of the SKU for cosmetic eyeshadow, the nail polish, and lipstick, pink blush, and the jewelry. This is only so that way we can include the pricing that will match the total amount down here below. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and start adding the pricing. And then we can go ahead and start determining if it needs to be updated or not. And that's all we have to do here. Just focus on the total amount. Now with the home jewelry, we need to lower that price so it can match at least 199. Okay, so now we need to focus on the sale price. So we're close to meet or to meet the amount that we need. So we just need to make a couple adjustments with the other sales price. Okay. Almost there, we just need to add nine dollars more. All right, that's all you need to do is just start focusing on the total amount. So, now I'm gonna do the same thing here for, for the suggested retail price. Now, the wholesale price. Almost there. So okay. So it's just a matter of playing with the numbers here. It's going to take some time, but it's really not going to take that long. It's not going to take half an hour or an hour. It really depends. All right, that's all you need to do here. Focus on the total amounts that's going to be for the SKU. Like I mentioned earlier, this is not going to affect the actual pricing of the SKUs. This is only to add the total amount of the SKUs that will be included in the kit. Since we applied the pricing under SKU information, that's where we need to focus on the most. That's why I re highly recommend creating a new product. Create as a kit for that product, make sure it's enabled, and then just come here and enable those SKUs that will be included in this kit. So here it's showing me in red that I cannot save my changes because I need to make sure The retail price, so I need to focus the retail price. So it's two hundred fifty dollars. Okay, Verity looks fun. Let's try to save it again. So it's just those small details, small minor details we have to pay attention to. All right, so we're going to click Save and Close. And now we're going to go to the shopping cart.
Now, the reason why you want to create a kit is because maybe you want to create a new product that's going to have these specific products, including the kit. All right, so here's our product. We have the product name, short description here, $150, well, because I'm logged in as the admin, it's treating me as a distributor account. So I can click on the image here, the product name, or click to view more information. Okay, so here we have the retail price. So it actually is showing us you save $100. That is the suggested retail price. Here's the sales price. Here's my price as a distributor. That's how much I'm going to pay for this kit. So, of course, I place my cursor on top of the detailed image, so it's going to show me a zoom tool. I could click here to view a larger size image of the product or the kit. And so I have my quantity here, my add to cart. This here we see binary commission value, matrix commission value, unit level commission value. That's where you have to apply the commission values directly through the SKUs. So here we have our PDF where we had applied it under files. So if I click on it, it's going to download the PDF. And of course the user can go ahead and view this PDF. Okay. So we did include uh, related categories and related products. May we also suggest the following product. This is part of the related products that I included. And then for the categories, customers that purchased test product also purchased, purchased from the following categories. So it's going to display here. And there is your video. And this is part of the product tabs. All right, and that should conclude our webinar for creating a kit. I thank you for joining today's webinar, and I hope you found this webinar on creating a kit very helpful. And our next webinar is going to be focusing more on shipping. Um, that way we can go ahead and create our own shipping methods, and that way prices can be displayed before checking out and completing your order. So once again, thank you for joining today's webinar, and I hope everyone has a good day.